everybody to the Click Podcast in a evolving DAO space that is hard to keep up on your own. We are the hub where you can traverse the DAO space to get alpha and operational insights from some of the best DAO operators in the space with curiosity and with pure amazing vibes. DAO deep dives, emerging trends, we cover it all. With us, we have a person who is considered a really efficient cog not just a cog, but the heart of the community in itself. He operates silently behind the Discord and is there to keep things really stable and everything. Without a person, like the no amount of vibes is really going to a really impactful community. With us, we have Coach Viking, who's been one of the, uh, and a really amazing member of both Bankless DAO and Polygon DAO. He's been heading community management for both of them and has been instrumental in setting up the DAO relationship guild for Bankless DAO. He's been a good friend of mine also, and it's been a pleasure kind of having him for the show. Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm doing well. How are things over here? Thanks for oh. the booming intro. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> hey, you deserve it, man. It's pretty much the work that you've earned that sort of respect in the ship. And being a good friend of yours, I really wanted to give you that. And regarding the day... Man, stoked as ever, the day is going to end. It's probably around 8.30 in the night over here, but ready to end things on a great note Have with this episode with you guys. I am your co-host, Abhishek Ajit, and with me is my co-host, uh, Abhishek Shanavne. Hey, Abhishek, what's up? How have you been? Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Hello, everybody. Hi, Coach. Yeah, so let's get things rolling. Coach, it's amazing having you here. You've not done a lot of podcasts or anything you've been a vital cog of both bankless and polygon but this is one of the few times that i really see you i'm not like really known your story so do tell us coach what exactly is your story and how did you find DAOs? this reason why people connect to DAOs, they all have their own internal experiences where they see this outlier bunch of people and they are able to stick so well you've succeeded at that with the sort of work they are doing. What is your story? I don't know if I'm swimming. I think sinking might, might be more like it. Um, so half the time. But yeah, it just, it's one of those things that just happened, I guess is how to put it. I don't really know how to put it other than that. <laughs> I've been an entrepreneur since 2012, 2013, working on paving my way. I spent a lot of time in boomer traditional finance. <laughs> I'm really loving calling it boomer fine now. I hope that one sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trad five was uh, pretty low now. Boomer five is gonna be the next thing now. Let's make it trend. <laughs> Go on. Let's make it trend. Yeah. So like I was doing life, health insurance, mutual funds, private equity, and out of all that, the thing I definitely enjoyed the most was the private equity side of it. So for those who don't know. That's basically capital raising for private company, companies that aren't listed on a stock exchange. So it's considered a riskier asset class than say, sometimes even crypto, maybe crypto, but the stock for sure, it's considered more risky. And heading into COVID, I was getting tired of all of the regulations and the golden handcuffs, as I like to call them. And uh, I got a lot of friends that are, that do business loans and that kind of stuff. And they're like, hey, we're still living out here in the Wild West, bro. <laughs> like, why, don't you, why don't you come out here and try selling business loans? Like, it's not much different than what you've already been doing. And uh, so, yeah, I was starting to get in the swing of things with that and COVID hit. Guess what happens when with, with all the lockdowns? Nobody's open for business. That means there's no revenue. So who's going to give a business money without any revenue? And I was like, there's no telling how long this is going to last. I got to cover my basis. Now, since I'm not really, since I don't have to look over my shoulder, wondering if the securities commission is going to hammer down on me for something that they think I'm doing or not, because I'm no longer licensed and associated with that. As I like, let's start learning about crypto. Let, let's see what, let's see what the buzz is about. Right. <laughs> and like two, three weeks in, I had been subscribing to the bankless podcast. And next thing they're like, Hey, we're starting a DAO and here's an airdrop. And I was like, what the heck is a DAO? What the heck is an airdrop? And why did I just get a pile of money transferred into my ETH wallet? And how do I use it? What do I do? 
And yeah, that effectively set me right down the rabbit hole. I had never, I was not familiar with Discord or or anything, I jumped in there to see what it was about. I made connections with a couple people and I was like, like, maybe I have an opportunity to bring my like leadership development, my health coaching and stuff over here. Like where there's a lot of devs, there's a lot of technical people. We don't necessarily have the best posture as we're hunched over our screens all day and everything. Yeah, maybe there's some no opportunity money. here. Yeah, that's essentially, that's essentially what happened. And then I was looking around, I was like, how can I get more involved in this space? And the airdrop was botched and there was a large portion of the community that was upset about it. But nobody likes talking about money. Nobody likes dealing with money. And if something is contentious, people don't really like dealing with anything contentious either. And I was like, typical me fashion, if nobody wants to step up and deal with this, I'll step up and handle it myself. <laughs> And I can't remember who, I can't remember who the guy was I ended up teaming up with, but me and somebody else, we started hammering it out, collecting community feedback. We did up the proposal to fix that airdrop and that was really the end of it. From there, it turned into a conversation of how can I stay in this space? What do I need to do to be here? Because I'm not a technical person. I'm not a dev. I have none of those skills that are traditionally thought of as being in this space so how do I integrate into this world and yeah it's just been a snowball from there <laughs> awesome that's pretty interesting from that moment when did you start like really contributing to bankless how was your experience there and then how did you kind of transition to like polygon yeah absolutely it was not without challenge that's for sure. And it is still very challenging right if you don't have a technical background if you're not a coder if you don't understand tokenomics and governance, it can be very hard to place yourself somewhere within a DAO, to, depending on your skill set. And sometimes you just got to be creative. And yeah. so it, it took a lot of time. It took a lot of friends, right? It really comes down to the connections I made in this space. The DAO lead at Polygon DAO ended up turning up into a good friend or ops lead at the Polygon DAO. Uh, a number of people at Bankless DAO in those early days. And I just started talking to people. I'm like, here's my skill sets. Here's what I'm comfortable with. Like, how do I make this work? How do I find a place to put myself? And things just kept going from there. I would try something and decide it wasn't for me or didn't like the learning curve or whatever. And I would respectfully back out. I would say, hey, like, this isn't for me. And I would find somebody to replace me before I walked out of the position. I'd say, hey, this person, I, they got it locked down. That's good. I yeah. need to go find something else. And then, and everybody would say, everybody would tell me, well, we need leadership development. We need this, we need that. But, I, but where, how? There's no roles that really describe that. And in like last year, when I started in DAOs, talking like leadership was still a taboo word. People were like, ooh, centralization. We don't want it. Get out of here. It was very interesting. And community management just ended up being something that formed, right? We saw that maybe there were conflicts within the community that weren't getting addressed and different things. And yeah, it just, I started building out that, I started building out, trying to build out that role in Bankless anyways. And then when I found out about this time last year, that Polygon wanted to decentralize the ecosystem and that they were accepting applications for the Genesis team for the DAO. I just laughed at myself and shrugged and I was like, what do I got to lose? I've only been in the space for six, seven months now. Um, I still haven't found my footing, but like maybe if I, I know the group of people that I'm with are good. I know they're helpful. And I know that if we just keep the communication and everything going, we could find something that's going to work. And so we kept talking, we kept communicating a few months went by, I hopped on the call where they just wanted, where they outlined all of the expectations and what they wanted to do, uh, make sure it's something that we could afford to do. And because I was doing so, because of my work with that relationships and what I was doing, trying to build a map out for community management just seemed like a no-brainer to settle me into uh, being the lead community manager and yeah things have been going well awesome that's quite the story coach from your experience working at both these places how do you find these community structures fundamentally differ 
like what do you see are like the differences between say like a bankless dao and the polygon what are like the fundamental differences there that's the classic conversation of centralization versus decentralization right <laughs> and yeah. they both have their strengths and their merit but they're not without their own frustrations as well right so mm -hmm. like a decentralized community like bankless it's great is you can plug people in all day long and if you plug somebody in somewhere that's not a good fit for them they don't like it for whatever reason and sometimes they ghost which sucks because <laughs> it, it leaves you hanging sometimes they let you know they're leaving but you also lack where you have the volume and the helping hands available in more of a decentralized community what you often end up lacking is accountability support and quality of work you don't really you don't really have anything that you can assess the quality of the work going out and there's mm -hmm. a lot of examples of that i won't get into too many details on the centralized side it's every everything is flipped that's you you got to go through an application process a resume process a hiring process a very traditional looking looking process in terms of getting community members plugged in within a centralized environment it doesn't happen unless the quality of work is at the bare minimum where it needs to be so that it can be built off of maybe a little bit behind right like we do mm -hmm. like to coach and train when we have capacity, but we don't always have that capacity in ultra growth startups, right? It's, yeah. you, sometimes you're just growing too fast. But yeah, it's, it, they definitely have their own challenges and their own strengths. And it's interesting <laughs> to see how yeah. both of those different modalities of operate are evolving. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So I was just wondering how the structure would look like wherein we could get like a hybrid of this centralization and decentralization. So have you ever given it a thought like how can I take some of the merits of say a decentralized system and apply it over on centralized one and have the merits of centralized one and decentralized one, for example, having a support wherein people don't just abruptly leave. So have you ever given some a structure like that a thought? To a degree, because there's only so much that we can control to do, right? With, when things are centralized, it could be a very bureaucratic process to get anything done. Mm -hmm. It's also the same on decentralized, because if you're too decentralized, you just, you can reach a point where there's no consensus within the community and you get gridlocked. There's a lot of examples out mm -hmm. there. Uh, Harmony is a good example. Binance is their biggest stakeholder. They never vote. The chain is stalled out. The growth, a lot of the projects over there are complaining. It's a, it's a very sad situation, right? Yeah. And it's not, it, it impacts us all across the space negatively. But what we can do is it really starts with how we're structuring our teams and how we're giving people autonomy, right? In my mind, I have failed as a leader if I'm the only one that is capable of doing my job, of performing my function. If I'm the only one that can do what I do, I failed. There goes my personal life. There goes my social life. There goes my traveling. There goes so much just because everything is relying on me to keep the ship afloat. So the way that in a centralized environment, how I mitigate that is by following the principles of a decentralized command, which is a concept from Jocko Willink in his extreme ownership thing, in his extreme ownership book, his leadership development. And that's like, you give people the autonomy that fits within their skill set, their knowledge, their capabilities, right? And give them that responsibility. And you could slowly cross train people to do everything, right? It might start off with like maybe writing a blog post here or there. It might start off with managing a calendar. Who knows what that looks like, but you can give members of your team the autonomy to make certain decisions and put certain things together and have that communication or that knowledge flow, as I call it, up and down the chain of command, right? So instead of having an exclusively top-down approach where everything is mandated, or a bottom-up approach where it's like, hey, let's hope that these proposals pass and every idea is a good idea. Um, I guess that is one way of combining the two that <laughs> I think about it. It makes a lot of sense that way when you put it. 
So I was just wondering that there has been like a trend that has been growing in the industry wherein people are having like too many calls within the community, which is not leading to like impact work. What do you say? What is the right balance between meetings and working async? How can communities do this the best way? I've been ranting about that since the beginning of my bankless days. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen their calendar, <laughs> but their SeshBot has seven, eight pages of calendar events. Oh like, my God, yeah. <laughs> it's the most yeah, confusing it's, it's, Discord ever. <laughs> yeah, unless you know exactly what you're looking for, you have somebody. Yeah, that, that could be hard. I am call adverse. I don't like calls. And sometimes it's a little embarrassing sharing my calendar link because it looks like I do nothing all day. <laughs> There's a lot of white space. <laughs> in there but i'm call adverse i find that the majority of things we can do can be handled async i don't agree with call and note space work and the reason that is we're all international right like if you guys are here at 8 30 9 o'clock at night i'm here at nine o'clock in the morning sometimes the times don't always work out that nicely sometimes it's, it's 1 30 in the morning somewhere at 10 30 somewhere else but Async does have some shortfalls depending on people's literacy, their ability to read and comprehend or work that way. Um, sometimes you need calls. In my opinion, anyways, calls are just an ad, on an as-needed basis. That That's how it should be. My teams, like in, in terms of keeping the DAO synced, I'm a fan of a monthly sort of all hands type call where everybody, like where all the teams can come share what they're working on, share what they're struggling with. And we can just find ways to work closer together and support each other. For team calls, it really depends. In a bull market, when things are busy and we don't know heads from tails, it can be nice to have the weekly meetings as long as they're being productive. But for the most part, like I'm, I prefer working async across the async across the board. That's just easiest. We can come and go at our convenience, and yeah, and if a call is needed, and just hop on. I agree that a lot of the communities have too many calls that just make it eats up your mind space. But at the same time, you take a look at a certain bunch of people, right? It depends on the sort of teams that you have in the first place. Some people, they really understand what's going on when they listen and when they're uh, immersed in the call. But at the same time, uh, when you are dealing with a lot of responsibilities and things like that, and you're the sort of person that should be able to revert back to something. So going async and seeing those those notes really goes a long way. So what are your thoughts on this approach where communities or teams should first assess what sort of team do they have? This is something you iterate by understanding your teams in general. And you figure out this person is able to learn well when he's in a call. He vibes with the team accordingly. There are some people that kind of do async. And depending on the proportion of the team that's there, you go for async or calls. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, there's a few different conversations there. The, the main one uh, is meet people where they are, right? If somebody's more comfortable operating a certain way, as is the DAO, set yourself up for success. It's that simple. Nobody's going to do something for you to make you successful like it's up to us to manage our own time our own schedule and to set things up in a way that works for our style and that's the beautiful thing about DAOs is nobody could take that away from us and we are empowered to to find the style and the systems that work for us uh, i found in decentralized communities you don't have the luxury of really picking and choosing who's on your team people just come and go you you get the hand that you're dealt and you have to work with it the world still very works very much like it does traditionally if you're not pulling your weight or you're struggling people do get left we're moving so fast we just we don't have that capacity necessarily how to bridge that gap i don't know in terms of figuring out what goes where or what goes to who i follow the i follow adsd which is automate, delegate, systematize, and delete. And that's always my way like, of looking at things, preferably automate it, like, especially when it comes to like data entry and redundant tasks, like all day long, let's get that automated. Nobody wants to be working on minimum wage tasks all day. I did business process automation for a while, a few years before COVID, 
and that was a big one. And I feel bad because I probably put a lot of people out of work by automating the amount of jobs. But the people who were around were a lot more happy because there was a lot less redundancy. There was a lot less repetitiveness and things just flowed a lot more smoothly. Delegate. Absolutely. If you're going to delegate something, you need to know what your team's strengths and weaknesses is. Whether you have a one-on-one -on -one with some, like one-on-one -on -one is the quickest way to be able to figure that out. And it doesn't have to be a call. I've got people I work with async and basically I wake up to DMs from them and they wake up to DMs from me because that's when we're available. And we just have running conversations based on when we're awake. And it might be a little bit slower, but like it does work. Systematization. We if we're not documenting our processes, if we're not keeping track of what's going on, we're going to stall out. We're going to crash and burn. The next thing is like looking at the systematization, the processes that we're using. And if something just doesn't fit, it's not working or it's not getting the results you want, just delete it. See you later. We don't need to focus on it anymore. Let's put that capacity somewhere else. And uh, just reverting back, the sort of community that exists right now based on your Experience. We, I understand that this approach of understanding your team and getting this async and the calls aspect tailored for the community, that's the way to go. But judging from your experience itself, you feel that setting up these async and having customized contributor related like async or calls things, they kind of work. I mean, what's been your experience with the community so far? If a community manager has to deal with the contributor base as is, going async would be the right approach to do? It's a mixed bag and there is no one way that's always gonna work yeah. it I just it, it depends on so many factors and quite often uh, also like just the state of the market but things what things are going on yeah, i don't really have a hard and a fast answer from that because even thinking about thinking back to to places where i'm involved like it might work this month but it might not work next month but then it might start working again it just, it really depends on, I guess, the season that, that the DAO is in and what needs to happen, right? We got to be like Gumby. We got to be flexible like Gumby one way or another. As soon as we start getting rigid and saying this is the one way to do it, we've now pegged herself with trad as tradition, as a traditional corporation. And we all know where that ends up. So, yeah. I think that's fair. One thing that one of your comments really caught my attention and that was the communities have to, you have to adapt to the state of the market itself. How do communities operate as per state of the market? And like, for example, you worked with Bankless and Polygon to have their own token. And during a bull market, the entire hysteria is massive. The whole interest will be pretty high. But in a bear market, it might tend to be a little low. So... How do you as a, from a community management standpoint, what are the trends you've seen with the community and how do you bring in that sort of working style that kind of take them through the way? That's a good question. During the bull markets, everybody wants to contribute. Everybody wants to be engaged. We get swamped with requests from people who want to contribute or build something or want to get plugged in. Like it, it's, it's just nonstop, right? In a bear market, what I like what I'm seeing through this bear, I guess this is technically my first bear market, so I might not be the best one to ask. I've only been in this space, right, since like last year when Pankless Town started. But in the bear market, like what I'm noticing this time around, like it's mostly just core contributors around at this point, right? And the core contributors are swamps and maybe on the verge of burning out. The contributors, the support, the moon boys, all of that, they're gone. It's quiet. There's really nothing. I don't think there's much we can do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. It's, I think, especially like in the times that we're going through now, you just got to keep your head up and keep pushing through, work on that positive self-talk and whatever you need to do to help you get through the day. Because it could be pretty demotivating for community managers if the community is quiet for a day or two, it's what's the point? <laughs> what am I doing here? What's, what is my function? What's my purpose? Nobody needs me. I would say it comes down to the strength of the community in the bull markets, right? When things are going good, what are you doing to retain people? What are you doing to keep them happy? Like Polygon, their community is still buzzing. Discord may be dead, but the community is still promoting. The chain is still growing. They're still lining up partnerships across the board. There's over 600 job openings on our job board across about 125 different projects within our ecosystem. That's so there's still a insane. lot going on. 
yeah, there's still a lot growing on that the space is still booming, but I think the quality of the contributor in these markets that are showing up is a lot higher. We just have less volume of people around right now. And that kind of leads to a very interesting thing. You mentioned that uh, during the bull market, the entire eagerness to contribute is high. And during the bear market, when things get tough, you have the core contributors really grinding it out to take the community through. This kind of becomes a real challenge for core contributors who when becomes a mental strain and they don't know what to do at times. And the whole DAO aspect itself is grown in as an antithesis to the sort of corporate culture that we've seen itself. We wanted to make this whole thing humane itself. So my question is, should DAOs be oriented to promote and systemize some sort of work-life balance for core contributors itself? Is that something that should be ingrained? The way we see it, we've built an entire system where it's easy to work together as a global unit. But then this aspect of bringing in work-life balance, is that something that can bring in that sort of motivation for the contributor base? in a sustainable way, irrespective of bull or bear market. What are your thoughts on that, man? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, It definitely needs to be a focus. I would be lying if I said I've been in the space without burning out last year. And like there, there are three, four times last year, I overcommitted. I was involved in too much and I just burnt out. It happens. It, it took me a lot to, especially when we're new in the space, we need to learn our boundaries. We need to learn that it is okay to say no. Somebody wants to you to attend a call at midnight, one in the morning, say no. <laughs> if they want to work with you, they need to meet you where you are. It's that simple. That is like a corporate thing, but like burning yourself out for the sake of whatever carrot is on a stick in front of you does no good. How to mitigate that? There's a number of ways to go about doing it. You can encourage out of office reminders, right? whether that's a channel somewhere or like a team calendar or something, you can have a, some sort of a system set up for out of office reminders. I haven't heard too much on this front in a while. I, it was starting to pick up steam last year. I'm not sure what's happening anymore, but uh, one thing I would like to see more DAOs incorporate is something to do something along the lines of like membership benefits or membership perks or something like that, especially for the DAOs where you have to have some sort of token, meet some sort of token requirements or NFT requirements or something. Like what type of perks are there for being a member? Or like maybe there's a life or a health coach or something that, that can help with posture and help with breathing or different aspects of stress or uh, maybe like mental health calls or something every now and then. but yeah, we need to, we definitely do need to find more ways to promote the health and the self-care of our members, but there are some, I'm not sure the communities that are doing it versus that aren't, but yeah, that, that's something I would like to see happen. I think we kind of did an experiment. I'm not sure how that's turned out where they've tried to bring in some sort of insurance in collaboration with, I think, Utopia Labs. I think that that's something, I'm not sure how it's panned out. And on the other hand, Opolis is trying to make an employment commons where it's becoming easier to get that sort of life insurance. Jaris from Bankless, also coming from Bankless, is looking forward to being a member himself over there at some point. But you've raised a good point there, right? I feel that I'm totally on tandem with you on this point, that having meaningless NFTs as a member badge does not go anywhere. If you have these sort of perks coming in, it goes a long way to boost that sort of motivation in spite of whatever is the challenge that's going on. If you really want to uphold the idea that's in the community nowadays, that DAOs are nation states, then having these sort of member perks would go a long way to boost that. If you consider DAOs a nation state, we take an analogy of nation states. Why would you want, why would someone from India would want to go to a place like Sweden or Finland? It's because being a citizen over there and get entitles you to a lot of perks that's not available in your, or if you're looking out for some sort of tax haven, the US is certainly not the best place to do it. So in that sense, you kind of have that sort of perks being a membership NFT that makes total sense. And when you boil it down to the community itself, 
allowing for that sort of motivation to be a common thing i think it has to be a natural thing but the question is see even when the core contributors are going through their own motions at the time motivation comes especially when you're a dao and the community is so dynamic it tends to come from these very unexpected places how do you as a community manager facilitate that sort of leadership to encourage that sort of motivation or that sort of action from these community itself you interface with so many members and things like that how you stand up as a community community manager goes a long way with these people how do you facilitate that sort of inno- initiative how do you allow for that sort of leadership to grow and make these fringe or someone who's like a lurker to become a real solid team player tricky one i think at the end of the day people are people and people are going to do what they want to do in the example of the lurker that's sitting on the sidelines and i don't do anything and i don't and sorry it's sad to say but there are why i burnt out last year that's one of the many reasons i burnt out it could take somebody 2 weeks to feel comfortable jumping in it could take somebody 6 months and i'm sorry but holding somebody's hand for 6 months i'm not a babysitter i'm not your parent i like that that's not my job right there there comes a time where people need to take ownership and accountability over their own lives and their own actions and if it's if they're not comfortable doing it or if it's not something that they're not willing to do i just leave them alone work your it's as it serious work your process do what you got to do it's not my life it's yours i'm not a dictator i'm not your boss i'm not your parent i'm not here to tell you how to live your life but i can guide you towards things that are going to help right people who show up and they say they don't know where or how to contribute what are you passionate about what are your three p's passions purpose principles right if you know what you're passionate about if you know what you're principled about if you know what your purpose for this stage of your life is find some find something whether it doesn't have to be a dao it could be a position it could be a team it could be any a number of things but whatever it is find something that is aligned with that and when you find the thing that is aligned with that it'll be a no brainer and whoever i'm talking they'll be like you find that it's a no brainer you'll just naturally jump in because that's your zone that's where you're comfortable but if you're not comfortable and you're that part of your zone like it's essentially a waste of everybody's time to be trying to get somebody to do something so i just don't for the people who know and they understand i i will do everything that i can to facilitate it if it's more of a decentralized if it's more of a decentralized community and i have a good pulse on the community i'll either direct them to where they need to be or i'll turn to somebody that i trust within the community and set up an introduction to help get the person the rest of the way but yeah for yeah so it's just again it just really depends but we've all been there we've all done it we've all broke our backs and invested a lot of time and by investing that time we've sacrificed a lot right we've given we faced a huge opportunity cost and it's gone nowhere so those like my advice for the people that that are lurking and that want to know what do you like find your 3 Ps and find either a team or a dao that's aligned with that and you'll be able to get plugged in if there's something for you to do and you're aligned with the team right and something that's more centralized it's the flip side of the coin this is your skill set there is a position on the job board go through the process <laughs> man i'm going to think twice before i make you my fitness coach that's for sure <laughs> blood does ever but yeah but fantastic advice by the way you got burnt out before you try because you really tried to get the lurkers on board so pretty solid advice you can try to convert the lurkers but you got to double down on the people who are showing some interest and they'll go all the way with you and ha- ensuring that each member has a 3p set you can have this personal the sort of personal willingness to contribute go a long way but then it gets me thinking sometimes when you're contributing to so many dogs you know come on who actually knows what the how set their life is no one's kind of introspected the way you do about how your life should be 
Now, my question is when you set foot into a Discord or a community, the sort of community that exists, it vibes on the three Ps that you're talking about, passion, principles, and purpose. And my question here is, do should the community exude the three Ps so much and put it out there so much so that it automatically weeds out the people that comes into the community in the first place and it makes life easier to get the right community members on board. Has the communities you've worked with done a good job of putting the three Ps out there that aligns with the, a personal community member's three Ps? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Absolutely. You could chalk that right up to core value alignment. And that's huge, right? We all, we need some sort of a North Star or guiding light or whatever you want to call it. And that can be an effective way to, to get it started for sure. But it only goes so far. Traditional, like tr traditional executive coaching, it used to be all about like mission, vision, values, the, that core value alignment and putting that out. But like even traditionally, we're learning like it, we're no longer like we, we've moved out of the information age and we're now in, in the exponential age. And in the exponential age, everybody, all of the top tier organizations and contributors have some sort of a value alignment. There's nothing special about that anymore. So what a lot of us to the space are trying to figure out is what's next. What, how can we position things differently. Like it was great. That model, that mental model used to work, but COVID and the exponential age derailed that. So how can we, like, I don't know. I think about that often. Where can we go from there? How can we create that alignment? And quite often it really comes down to the people on the front lines, the, the people who are active and engaged the most in the servers. And another cur curious thing that I ask is because, you know, how the, you interface with so many people you tend to know the pulse of the community that's working there. The community puts out a brand identity. They have an expectation of how the community uh, should be when it comes to core values. But the com uh, but it's it's only when you iterate that you're able to know that, that how the community is reacting to that. But you're on the front lines and you're interfacing with these people and you know what's going on with the core values of the community that interfaces. Do you have that sort of communication between you, the CMs, and the ones that kind of runs operations or the branding? Do you have these sort of calls? And how do community management, how does a community manager bridge that gap better? What, how's your experience been handling these things? Really depends on the season and what's going on, on, on how my experience has been. But the more that you can, I would suggest, and like I, I probably beat this drum quite a bit, but the culture of the, the community starts with the team. It starts with your core contributors and it filters down from there. So I tend to do a lot above and beyond my quote unquote job description for that. Like it probably is an operations thing or something else to be running an all hands call every month, but I'm the one who coordinates it and I'm the one that does it because I want to see everybody being brought together. Okay, um, that's where to go. I do. Yeah. And the concept of async work is still very foreign to a lot of us. So quite often the weekly calls are still a thing. So from there, I tend to hop on like other team leads calls. I've enjoyed like, I am the worst. Look at my track record, trying to start up my own businesses. I suck at sales and marketing. <laughs> I have failed every <laughs> single time, but I enjoy being on the marketing team call, even though it's not my world, but I can provide that insight that we're picking up from the community to help make different decisions. So the way that it, the way that it works for me is the the community managers are expected to be um, drumming up that sentiment, finding the trends and doing that kind of stuff and reporting it back to me so that I can package it in a way that provides solutions to work with the other teams. That's generally the way that I have it structured. Right now, I'm running a very lean team. There's only two other community managers with me. So I do spend a lot of time in my waking hours within the community as well. And um, the next big thing as, as team lead that I'm going to have to tackle is like what constitutes information that needs to be documented documented or documented what information is critical to flow to the other teams and 
what is just whatever it's our thing we'll deal with it on our own yeah there, there's still a lot of work to do but again there's no one way to do things right so it's just try it and if it doesn't work or it's not getting the right results either rebuild it or pivot i think uh, that's perfectly fair as um, the frontline people you got to exude that sort of sentiment and you got to be around and document it as much as you can to allow for um, the right sort of the sentiment to be grown among the community i also feel that the people who kind of run branding who uh, who are at the top in terms of hierarchy should also participate in these sort of calls to understand what's going on at the ground with the community managers also so that they understand exactly what's the sentiment with the community too many times we see that there's a disconnect between what's going on with those who handle brand branding and marketing and what's going on with the core community side of things so it may not be a major thing but at some point those who are part of the core team and core contributors should be involved throughout whatever is happening with the dao at, at some point just to figure out what's going on with the community i think that's a very good way to do it when you talk, look at web2 itself some of the best businesses in nobody they work out very well because the core team is so tuned to what's going on with the ground that way and that kind of allows you to stay evolving with the time as well with that regard coach you've been what to say you've been a genesis member and of uh, both bank plus and polygon you kind of seen a lot of communities kind of uh, emerge and grow along the way what are the communities that you look up to as uh, really well managed dark communities and which communities do you see will kill it um, in a couple of years down the line really make the paradigm shift time i will tell i'm not going to throw any eggs <laughs> in, in any basket nfa okay um, i'm putting it out there nfa non financial advice please give us the alpha coach <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm not putting myself in a position to be picking favorites i'm staying neutral <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing come on coach i thought you were going to get some alpha out of you but okay that's a good way of doing yeah. things personally i'm a big fan of how uh, you've maintained the polygon dao discord i think there is a lot of scope for people to contribute also but then it's not uh, you got to like really make an impact to stick around and be part of the team that way the sort of ease with which you have brought in the desai ames and you allow for people to bring in that sort of to experience it all and you've done a fantastic job that way you're very accessible to talk to sometimes cms are not that way they're cut off dms and it's just not very accessible and doesn't work that way so in that sense you've done done a phenomenal job that way abhishek what are the other communities that you've seen are pretty well managed yeah man uh, just on top of my head i can think about seed club they have it pretty well and then after that so since we recently spoke with daniel i did get a chance to check out aryan and shout out to aryan really very well managed yeah and lastly if i just think about it i have been a big fan of deep work studios i really like their community how their discord has been managed andre is super accessible so shout out to deep work too so if i had to have my top 3 names then they are going to be the ones <laughs> yeah yeah man fantastic neutrality right there the boy <laughs> <laughs> taking a page should... or two from uh, coach's uh, playbook <laughs> <laughs> oh in that regard it's been an amazing conversation coach we've really enjoyed uh, having this insight you've been brutal not Uh, just straight forward you've been brutal as ever it's been <laughs> amazing having this conversation with you i think uh, with respect to community management insights people should look up to you but they should think a bit before they get you on board as a personal <laughs> coach i think <laughs> yeah yeah i'm definitely not everybody shot at tequila and i don't want to be <laughs> i could be an acquired taste for some people <laughs> uh, but success is going to be a guarantee that's for sure you've done a phenomenal job traversing these two communities it's been a pleasure talking to you how can people follow you and be a part of your journey how can they contribute to bankless and polygon dot please let us know yeah for sure my twitter probably the best place is coach viking there's no vowels in viking it's just v k n g 
I didn't want it to be a long drawn <laughs> drawn out handle. So there's that getting plugged in is in a bank list and understand that the thirty five thousand bank can be cost prohibitive to some people. So there is a guest pass system there. They've got mentorships and all sorts of different programs there to facilitate that. Pretty much anybody in the Get Involved channel can help out with that. With Polygon, just hop in the server and show up and just start doing stuff. I can't remember who it was. I would have to find the tweet. Uh, one of our contributors a couple of weeks back wrote up, did a long form blog post, how they became one of our content writers. And he just, he showed up. I, I think he was... I think he was hanging out in the community with me since Genesis and he just kept pushing out blog content and this, that, the other thing. And eventually it was decided that the quality of work meets our standards. So he was brought on <laughs> and yeah, he wrote a blog post about that. I could try and dig that up and share it, but, or just use the job board that I think I, I am so glad that job boards are getting embraced now in the space because last year when I started. You could be volunteering for two weeks or six months or more before you see a paycheck. And it really depended on really whether or not people like your quality of work and how much you're giving, right? If you're not given a lot and you don't have a, a good quality of work, that could take six plus months. Now with the job boards, it makes it a lot easier for a DAO to vet contributors to see who people are. Yeah. So there's definitely no shortage of ways to get plugged in. If you're like me and you're like, Hey, I'm not a technical person and I have no skills, uh, I have no valuable skills to add to this space. I'm going to say that you're a BSer and maybe send me a DM <laughs> and there, there's something you could do. I was, I was actually joking with one of my community managers yesterday. I dropped a note in the general chat and I'm just encouraging people to keep building. And my community manager was like, no, I'm useless. I have no skills. I'm not a techie. I'm like, well, that's why we're community managers and not marketers. Or devs. Like, <laughs> we don't need those skills. We found somewhere for our skills. So why are we beating ourselves up? <laughs> but community, without community managers, you can't go anywhere. That's for sure. It, it is a skill of its own to deal with uh, all sorts of people that way. And with that regard, thank you so much for coming on board. Listeners, stay tuned for the next episode. We have someone very special coming in from Polygon Dow, just like my man coach viking over here and uh, follow us on spotify give us a five star rating i think coach really deserves this uh, for the phenomenal talk he's given and see you man